Hi there, welcome to Games Over Coffee Consulting. People give me their games, I give feedback on their game design. My name is Devon, and today we're talking about Untitled Water Lab by Toffee. Toffee sent this game in because he wanted because he, he wanted to make this concept that he had into a bigger thing. So in the submission form, he said, the game is about the satisfaction of wiring things up cleanly and creating a well-oiled clean system. Myself and others like the idea and want to expand on it. My issue with the game and with my indie game hobby in general is that I'm okay at making systems like this, but I have huge trouble extrapolating it into a larger, more meaningful experience. So I decided to reach out to Toffee and try to uh, clarify things a little bit more. And he sent me this. So I think that the trouble I'm having is with making a game deeper and maintaining the player interest when they're sat in the same game for a while. I'm not sure what that would require, you know, more features, narrative, more complexity. This is a frequent thing I've run into, making a prototype, and then that's it, that's the whole game. I'm unable to extrapolate the idea without feeling like I'm just adding noise. I guess what I'm looking for is a method, direction, or examples of how to take a simple core idea and meaningfully extrapolate it into something bigger and worthwhile. What an insightful question. That is, this is like, this is very deep. <laughs> <laughs> I've talked a little bit about making smaller games bigger before. One of them was this one on this tower defense game. One of them was this one about making a, a narrative game uh, a little bit more empathetic. I don't feel like I have the answers to this, but I, I'm definitely going to try my best at trying to help you with, with what's going on here. One word that caught my attention on this email was the word change and that idea of being stale. Putting in more stuff and more things into this game would sure extend its life, but it would just be meaningless. It would just be a lot of the same. Obviously, games are not meaningful by themselves, right? They need something to make them meaningful. I always come back to the same example of Portal. I think I, I, I believe I talked about this last week too. So when Portal was being made, you had an abacular drop and then Valve came along and said, hey, you know, uh, make that game for us. And so what they did was they started making this prison game where they wanted to use portals to escape the prison. After doing it and after playtesting, people didn't understand that that was the game. Like you escape the prison and then you're like, okay, so now the game starts. Well, no, that, that was the game. So why did people feel like that was the beginning of the game? Why did it feel like it was just a tutorial up until then? And Mark Laidlaw, who wrote Portal, he talked about how the team felt there was no pressure to push the player forward. There was no motivation, there was no context to make the player aware that there's something more at stake here. So the specific thing that they created was Gladys, and they you know, created the story around them being trapped in somewhere and working against an AI intelligence in order to escape. Now, the reason why I find that story so fascinating and why I keep coming back to it is because it does something really cool with the gameplay. It takes the gameplay, the gameplay that was in this prison, and it doesn't really do anything to it, right? The gameplay is kind of the same, but the context changed. And when the context changed, that changed the game. So why does that happen? When you change context in games, you're changing the way that the player thinks about the actions that they're taking. In games that have no narratives or very light narratives, a lot of times this context is driven by win states and lose states. Aaron Signal did an excellent video on win states and lose states here, if you wanna watch that. So this is the reason why my mind kept revolving around that word change. So Toffee, is it that you want the game to change mechanically or do you want the game to just be more meaningful? And I figured what, you, what you're looking for is a more meaningful experience. And what that means is that you just need to change the context. The game right now, as it exists, it does feel like a, a concept piece or a prototype, or it feels like a little toy. And the reason why is because it's in like this little sandbox area with nothing at stake. There's nothing at stake here. Every piece that you unlock just makes earning money faster and more efficient. Now, of course, you can insert your own kind of limitations here. You could think, okay, I'm going to try to get to $10,000 or get $100,000 or something like that. But there's no in-game rule sets that have limited the player's actions at all. So adding things like win states or lose states in this kind of system would create much more meaning in it. So context kind of reminds me of this one game that is, uh, is narrative driven. And the whole game is just pressing, I think it's just three buttons, maybe four four buttons. You have a really unnerving feel as you play it. There's another game that all you do is walk, walk and run, and that's it. Well, you can interact also. That game is also very horrifying. It just so happens that there's two horror games that I'm talking about. What are those games? Iron Lung 
and Slender Man. The reason why they're so interesting is because of the context that's involved. In Iron Lung, you're not just pressing buttons, right? You're navigating your ship around a map and it's kind of all imaginary because you're not really moving anywhere. But the design of the map and the world and the lore that's involved here makes it so much more alive and makes it feel a lot more real than what it actually is. Same with Slender Man. In Slender Man, those mechanics of just walking and running don't really mean anything until Slender Man starts following you and you start feeling a lot more anxious because your choices mean something. Those games have really good context that change the meaning of your decisions. It doesn't have to be like this for every game. It just so happens that I'm talking about games that have narratives in them. The meaning behind your choices is what makes a game deep. If you think about one of the simplest games that's also one of the most deep games is chess. Chess has six different pieces, but when you have two teams working against each other on a board that constrains their movement, it's very, very deep. You can create a more meaningful game with all different kinds of things. It doesn't have to be narratives. It can be win states and lose states. But one of the easiest way to create meaning in your game is to start creating limitations and start shaping context so that the player's gameplay is led toward certain areas. So my advice to make a game deeper and to add more meaning to the choices that are already there would be to start putting on goals and limitations. So if you have some sort of thing that you like, a, a mechanic that you're interested in, and you wanna make it into a fully fledged game, think about what the experience is that you want to deliver first, and then experiment with limitations on how to get that experience delivered. Maybe what you want is a very relaxing game. And in that sense, maybe you give the player a lot less limitations or very soft limitations, something like in Roller Coaster Tycoon, for example. In that game, you have pretty lofty goals. You have goals that have to take place over a long period of time and it allows the player to get familiar with the mechanics and kind of customize whatever they want. And then after a certain amount of time, then they start to understand how the money flows and everything. And they start to achieve that goal of getting a certain amount of money. Games like Animal Crossing are very relaxing because they have also very lofty goals that don't actually put any time pressure on the player. Pay off your house whenever you can. Let's think of an arcade like an on-rails shooter, okay? An on-rails shooter that is more relaxing than others would be like the hitting the targets with the Wii remote, gaining a certain amount of points, seeing if you can beat your previous score, and they're playing in very small intervals. So the player feels more like it's just fun. It's this hills and valleys thing. You're getting really engaged and then you're in moments of rest. We can change the context a little bit more. If you want the player to be a little bit more stressed out, you could have you know a game like House of the Dead, where you're basically timed on each shot because otherwise a zombie is going to attack a person. There's really high adrenaline ones, like the ones with the arcade ones, like a time time something, I forgot what it was called. But those ones you're trying to see how far you can get on like a single play because you're not there to spend money all day. You're just gonna insert a quarter and then see how far you can get. So basically giving the player one life and making them feel really, really high stakes. So it really just depends on the experience that you want to give to the player. Do you want the player to feel like there's a puzzle going on? Do you want them to do a specific type of unlock? Or should they reach a certain amount of money by a certain time? or maybe just a certain amount of money without a certain time. Think of different limitations. Think of different goals and different ways to motivate the player forward. Or do you want them to grow a skill? Or do you want them to just chill? Experimenting with limitations is something that you can do to see if you can shape context around the gameplay to see if you can create different types of strategies for the player. Playtesting is a big thing for this. You can't really know what kind of strategies there are if you're the only one playing it. So change something, see how it plays, change something else, see how it plays, you know, do that kind of thing. Another thing is obviously adding story to your game. I talked about how to add story to a game in this video for Veggie Quest, I think is what it was. That was that was a fun that was a fun one. What's really cool about that one too is that it is all context driven, where the story is the only thing that changed any type of mindset that I personally had with the gameplay, which was really cool. I would just want to see different types of motivation. You know, how are you motivating the player? Uh, what is it that you want them to do? Build different challenges for them, different skills. What kind of experience are you trying to deliver here? Think about all those things. Think about how to experiment with them and have fun. So thank you so much, Toffee, for submitting this game. If you're a developer and you're not this developer, you can submit a game to me if you'd like. There's a link in the description or you can go to gamesover.coffee. Speaking of playtesting, we have a brand new playtesting section in this uh, in this Discord where I ask uh, some of the developers here to playtest a game before we talk about it. So starting with the next video that I make, uh, I'm going to incorporate some of their feedback into these videos. That should be pretty cool. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. If you want to, you can join the Discord, you can uh, become a playtester if you'd like, or you can just chill and have other people play, play test your game, or you can just talk about game design, or you can just drink coffee, because that's what we do here. That's everything. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I'll uh, talk to you guys later. Peace.